All right, so this morning we're going to be chatting on the phone with Ingrid Machu, a.k.a. Lady IB. Good morning, Lady IB. Good morning, good morning. How are you doing this morning? You all right? I'm good. <laughs> nice. Well, I understand that you won the first and second Calypso Queen competition in Tobago back in 1990 and 1991, respectively. Yes. Tell, me, tell me, how did you get your start in Calypso? Okay. First, I started singing in my mom's choir. She had a Baptist church, and there I started at the age of 12. Nice. Then later, now, when I was about 20, 22 years, I had a group, and you know, we used to do, at the time, we used to call it Pekong with the group. Pekong? Until one day, one day, Prince Unique, we took him for a uh, artist in a concert. And after he heard me sing, he asked me, wouldn't you like to sing Calypso? I said, yes, but I can't write Calypso. Right. He said, okay. And that was it. So then, you, you know, coming close to the canvas time, he called me. He said, I have a song for you. I said, I have a song for me. You know, it was like a joke. Yeah. Because I, I always loved Calypso, always loved Calypso. And then he told me, Calypso rose of an audition. Let me meet there for 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Trust me, I ain't see the Calypso yet, I ain't see the lyrics, nothing, nothing. But I'm going for audition. And he came and he gave me a verse and a chorus right there. And when it was my time, I went and did it. That was it. That was my kickstart in 1987, Calypso. Nice. And I understand yeah. that in 2005, you decided to stop competing totally? Yes, because of, you know, things change, things change, things change in Calypso about then. Mm -hmm. Before, you have to work for a title. You have to work for a title. And people only work for something if they love it, you know. And I was robbed from the windward Calypso monarch. I came first. And they gave me second for reasons I don't want to go into right now. And it hurt me. You know, it hurt me. And the trend continued a couple of years, you know, I just showing up. But then I said, look, it doesn't make sense because don't care how good my character is, they won't beat me because I'm outspoken. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. I say what I see. I stand for truth and I stand for justice. And this is what they can handle. So, Better go compete, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Lady, Lady Ivy, do you think that the that the competition is actually better for, or is it hurting the the Calypso fraternity and industry? You said it again. The the competition in general, like I I realize that a lot of Calypso, uh, you know, is geared towards the competitions, various competitions, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. like you're saying, you know, you feel as though the competitions are not always fair. Um, and mm -hmm. they're not always right and they're not always just. Do you yeah. think that, that competitions are hurting the industry that is Calypso? It is. It is, number one, Calypso was not about competition songs. And it, it me to a point that everybody writing competition songs. Right. If you notice, this, this is the thing that is driving people away from tents. Calypso is supposed to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. You can have serious lyrics with nice melody that people could enjoy, a hook line, you know. And it's gone from that. You go to a Calypso 10 now and everybody is singing a competition tune. Right. You know, that is not, not, that is not Calypso. That is not Calypso. Now, you, you spoke earlier about, you know, that you, you, didn't, you couldn't write Calypso, so you had to get people to write for you and stuff like that. Yes. Um, but I understand could, that, yeah. you're, that you're very well known for extempo. Yes. Well, he wrote for me the first year and the second year. Right. And then the third year, I wrote something for myself. Okay. And, you know, while performing the song, I said, but look, you writing better than the song she writes for you. And from there, I started to write for myself. Right. You know? And I will write a Caribbean song. I'll go to one Joe Tempo Caesar and I'll ask him, how this song, you know? Mm -hmm. He'll say, take all this and put in that. And I've been writing my own songs for, from ever since. Okay. You know? Okay. I, Tempo was 2005. Yeah. 
I entered the Exquisite Temple arena. I was the only woman, and still is the only woman who is Temple in Tobago. This girl's not brave enough. And I won it. And then it was, came around about five more years. Then I won it, and then that's it. It's cut out. Okay. So Interesting. I can win that again. Tell but me, tell me about the, tell me about the condition of, of the of the Calypso fraternity in Tobago, especially. I understand that you have some concerns about it. Yes. Um. We had general election a couple months back, you right. know, and there were issues in. If you are having an election, members supposed to be informed in due time where they can pay the dues. That election went, it was a secret, the day to the deadline, the, the, everything was a secret. I got to know through a friend from Trinidad who told me next week, Wednesday, is the deadline for paying dues. I said, what? So I started hustling now Calisonians all because it, it was the normal for Calisonians to pay their dues on the morning of the election. That used to happen, right? So uh, Calisonians who don't enter competition yeah. wouldn't run and go, especially there's a fee in Tobago, membership fee of $200. And all, right. all the other um, zones in Lady, Trinidad Lady, is one. Lady IB, unfortunately, we're going to yeah. have to stick a pen on it because we have a hard stop at the top for, for news. Um, so we're going to have to stick a pen on it, but thank you very much for joining us and congratulations on the journey and I wish you all the success going forward. And with that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take kick it upstairs. One time, we're going to take a quick break and come back with so much more inside in our morning. So keep it locked.